Hello friends and welcome to another video from my series Quick Faults On, in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. Last week two new short treks have premiered on CBS All Access, and because I live in Europe uh, it took me a while till I could um, obtain them if you know what I mean, uh, but the first one of, of the two was called uh, The Girl Who Made the Stars, and these are my honest opinions about it. Well, this is going to be a short video. After I've seen the episode, the only thing uh, I could think about was that I want the 7 minutes and 45 seconds of my life back. First, the good thing, it is animated using CGI, and some of the animation actually looks pretty good. Yes, that's all of the positive things I can say. There is no real story in this one. We start with a young Michael Burnham, who wakes up scared. So her father tells her a story about the girl who made the stars. So yes, we have a story inside a story. I'm not sure if the four-year-olds uh, who this was written by and for will be able to follow the structure, but okay, but okay. So the real story is about an African tribe who lives in times when there are no stars on the sky. And that's so dumb that I don't know what to say about it, but I'm not going to be too harsh, because as I said, it's written by a 4 year old for 4 year olds. Oh wait, I'm sorry, it appears to be written by an adult man. Some Brandon Schultz, no clue who it is, but he's credited on IMDB as assistant to writers during Star Trek Discovery. Ok, back to the non-existent story. The African people don't travel outside their village during the night because they think that a giant snake will eat them, but little girl, who has the same character model as Michael, doesn't listen to the command of the older and much wiser man. She goes outside of the village and gets attacked by the giant snake monster because giant snake monsters existed, apparently. Or is it all happening just in her head? Anyway, she is not eaten by the giant snake monster, because she sees an alien ship crash land and she follows it. There she meets an alien octopus monster, who she is not afraid of, for some reason. Probably girl power reason or something, I don't know. So when the alien octopus uh, monster sees that she's not afraid, it gives her a thing. She returns back to her village where she gets told what the elderly men think about her, but she has no reason to listen to them. She opens the thing she received from the alien octopus monster when she was trying to escape from the giant snake monster, and stars pop out out of the tiny thing she held in her hands. So she created stars, and she becomes their queen, because... why? Because she's dumb? Because she likes to risk her life for no real reason? Because she doesn't want to listen to men who are older and wiser than her? I don't know, but that's the end of the story, so Michael is growing up listening to stories like this one, Stories in which a girl disobeys her orders because she thinks that she's smarter than her superiors, and instead of a punishment she gets rewarded. And her father calls her, unironically, his queen. Well, I think that explains her horrible personality when she's an adult on board of the Shenzhou and the Discovery, so they got at least that thing right. The morals of this story are horrible. The characters are truly bad. Absolutely nothing makes sense. I know it's supposed to be for four year olds. At least I hope it's supposed to be for them. But at the same time, why would anybody want to create a Star Trek story for four year olds? To get them to watch the rest of the franchise. But the rest of the franchise is definitely not for them. I honestly don't understand why is this a thing that exists. I'm reading a book about making of the original animated Star Trek series from the 70s, and one thing is sure, uh, Roddenberry was desperately trying not to dumb down that show so that it'd be available 
accessible for kids. Bravo, you brought the franchise directly to the opposite of what the original creator wanted. But as I said, I don't want to be mean, because it's for kids, and yes, trust me, this is me not being mean. You don't want to hear me being mean? Well, at least it's short, and the next one was better. On my overall scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 10 is a masterpiece, and 5 is just average, I would give this episode 1 out of 10. 1 point for the animation, which is sometimes good, and sometimes unintentionally creepy. But as always, these were just my opinions, let me know what did you think about this story, if you have seen it of course. If you have some free time, you can watch any of the other videos on my channel, you should see some links on screen right now. Thank you very much for watching, and see you very soon. Hopefully tomorrow with a video about the next short track called Ephraim and Dot. That one was also far from perfect, but it was better than this one. Thanks and bye.